I'm Paul Larson, and it's time to shine the spotlight on a talented artist who creates items that could have a practical use, but she approaches them more as decorative items. Although Native American baskets have a long tradition of helping transport objects from one place to another, some of them remain stationary, objects themselves to be looked at and admired. Seneca artist and graphic designer Penelope Minner of Salamenica, New York, has displayed her baskets and given demonstrations on the grounds of the Fenimore Art Museum in Cooperstown, New York. Artist Penelope Minner says she creates baskets, in part, out of respect for the traditions of the Seneca people. Actually, I'm doing the basketry because I am trying to carry on the tradition. So that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm uh, kind of like perpetuating the art, because we're losing the art in our area. I was mentored by my cousin, and she unfortunately um, passed about six years ago from breast cancer. So I'm very grateful for the time that I had with her to learn how to do the baskets, because she passed that on to me. So I'm kind of giving back as well. American Indian art curator Ava Fognell of the Fenimore Art Museum says she's proud to display Native American baskets in the collection. Baskets and basketry weaving have, of course, been important to Native cultures for a very long time. Native people would trade amongst themselves or to other Native people, other Native groups, but also it was a way or, or an object that you could sell to the settlers. Um, so it had an important, um, it was, there was an important financial aspect to it, and it was also really important for collecting. Minner says her pieces do help collectors with their hobby. The ones that I do are mostly decorative, and I know people don't really use my baskets. I know they just put them up on a shelf and then they have a collection that they're adding to. The Fenimore has, in its collection, a basket that is about 180 years old. We have a splendid old basket from the 1830s, which is Oneida, which is um, ash splint, woven ash splint, but it also as decorations have potato stamping on it. You, the old using a potato, painting it, and um, stamping the decorations on the outside of the basket. So it's really decorative. The Fenimore also owns this more recent piece. Contemporary artists take the art form and pushes it even further. Um, more complicated, more intricate, uh, different decorations, different techniques um, of using the ash splints to create exuberant testaments of creativity in basketry. Fognell says she's happy that Minner participated in the museum's Native American art series, sharing her work with the visitors. We're very fortunate here at the Fenimore Art Museum to have Penelope here and it's very interesting, um, I think, to see how contemporary artists work with old traditions, but it's able to push the envelope and take it to, to new dimensions. I kind of stray from traditions in some ways because I kind of like, I like origami, the influence from other cultures as well. So when I pick up a piece, or actually when I'm shopping, maybe in an antique mall or something, I'll look for different influences just because I might like the pattern or something that they have in there. There's a different element that they might have used. Um, the only thing that I really don't use is a lot of color. I'm still in the natural phase because I like the no additives, no preservatives kind of a thing. So it's all natural wood. The look of some of her baskets differs from tradition, but she tries to keep the creative process rooted in old customs. I'm trying to stay true to the art. Some of the tools are very, it was just a, a straight blade. I just use a jackknife. That's the um, one tool that my mentor was only allowed to use was a split, her switch blade. I just imagine back when, you know, like pre, you know, pre contact that they had probably sharp objects, maybe an arrowhead or a rock that they had to use. So it always brings me back to, wow, my ancestors were pretty powerful ladies. You know, they had to work the fields and then they had to do the breakdown of the baskets. And they, you know, they, it was all just something that was amazing to me. I get some splints from a supplier that I have and she gives me the splints raw. I then break it down. I have to soak them overnight 
and when I break them down it usually takes a little bit to get them opened and clean them so I have to scrape the, the fibers off of the, the splints and then I have to gauge them and get them ready to begin weaving and then the weaving part is really the easiest part. Minner teaches basket weaving at various workshops and passes the techniques on to other Seneca people. I try to tell my students that the baskets that are, they are making are not to look perfect because nothing in nature is perfect. Everything seems to work organically. If there are flaws or irregularities, I tell them that it's okay. Being able to share the tradition and educating the public about the basketry. I think that people have a greater appreciation once they see how it's done and what kind of effort it took to make the baskets. I think that they um, appreciate the art a little bit more because it's something that's dying in our reservation. Um, we're trying to bring it back and I'm trying to keep the tradition alive in our area. Mountain Lake PBS is producing the Native American artistry pieces in cooperation with the New York State Historical Association's Fenimore Art Museum in Cooperstown, New York. This project is also a partnership with the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services. Spotlight segments are funded in part by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.